I'd like to call the meeting to order the Australia Sanitary District. Uh, roll call, please. Thank you, Borstein. Yes. Uh, Kelly. Yes. Legs. Yeah. Scylla. Here. Gaffney. Present. Thank you. Uh, please, uh, call your name, the Pledge of Allegiance. Name of the flag. The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God. Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd now like to adjourn the closed session. <laughs>
taxable versus non-taxable exempt bonds and early calls and that sort of thing that we were looking at in terms of the next steps with that property back then. Well, uh, also tracking the, the city of London uh, general plan process, which has taken longer than expected. So, uh, and given that we've accomplished a lot, and I won't go into great detail, but the staff report talks about what we've uh, done under this contract up to now, but we have expended all the funds, um, and there's a need to continue to work because the larger general plan process and housing element are still uh, in progress. Uh, the Surplus Lands Act was amended, which created new, uh, new requirements for us to make sure that we comply with under new laws. And uh, now there's a whole state agency and enforcement program overseeing that new law that we need to track and uh, keep an eye on um, how that process is unfolding for other public agencies that are trying to dispose of their surplus land. So uh, complicated endeavor. Uh, all the way, it's been really valuable to have Brian and his team um, bringing expertise, bringing other case examples, tracking projects such as the Oak Hill project, which is the former San Quentin Gun Range, uh, which is state-owned property that is being developed and going through processes that are similar to what we would encounter. So there's been a lot of value added. Uh, we can, I could go on and on about all the examples, uh, but I do want to give um, Brian a chance to um, to say a few words about the work we've done, uh, you know, such as all the information presentations, you remember all of that, and what would what he sees is the work to be done coming up in the coming months and maybe a couple of years uh, uh, as as we keep close track of everything that's uh, unfolding uh, and uh, and all the requirements we need to meet. So uh, and then how the market is feeling as well. You know, what makes sense? To play? decisions you might make to really get the best value for the rate better. So with that long and winding introduction, I'd like to Brian to start. Great. Well, thank you, Jim Moore. I'm not sure if it's appropriate to stand up or not, but since I'm over here, I thought it might, if that's okay. Yeah, um, by the way, number one, it's good to be here with you all. It's my first meeting um, in person uh, for Us Valley Sanitary District. When I started this journey, um, Felicia pointed out I didn't have any children. <laughs> uh, and now I have two. Yeah. <laughs> um, and that's that's how long we have been. Uh, been at this for uh, two and a half years. Uh, we were awarded uh, this engagement through a competitive process. Um, and it's been a sincere pleasure working with the district um, under the leadership of GM Moore, um, assistant GM Felicia Newhouse. So, kind of where. Who is our team? Steve mentioned this. Um, we assembled uh, a multidisciplinary project team. Um, it's not just Century Urban, uh, but we're acting as the prime. We have CB Richard Ellis, um, who's a well known brokerage firm uh, who we've been utilizing for appraisal and market information. Um, we've retained a firm known as LDP Architecture uh, to prepare architectural feasibility studies uh, in relationship to the general plan update. Um, and how the density and massing will affect uh, the, the 2,000 large per lane site. You'll recall we also came up with a community engagement plan and approach and performed the community strat, uh, survey. Um, and the results from that survey, I think, were pretty valuable to kind of keep on the community prize, but also the board prize is the, is the one we're doing. Um, and Steve mentioned we have a firm that specializes in tax and bonds. Uh, there is tax exempt debt um, that's associated with the cleanup and remediation of the of the site, and so we're coming up with approaches and strategies to either keep that debt in place or unwind it um, as part of the future developer solicitation process. Now we've had some twists and turns along the way. Um, I don't think any of us, you know, kind of realized the global pandemic would take us to where we are. Um, and a lot of people thought this was a temporary thing. It turns out it's not, as we all know. Um, secondly, there's been amendments, and Andrea knows this better than anybody, um, with regard to the Surplus Lands Act in terms of its enforcement, you know, uh, but also the processes and procedures in which a public agency needs to dispose of land. Um, so that's something uh, we've been taking very seriously um, and to make sure we're adhering to that, to that process. Further to that point, the general plan update um, for Larksburg General Plan 2040 is taking shape. And we've been uh, effective in understanding that plan 
um, with the help of Steve and Felicia and the district's council, Riley Heard, to help influence that in a positive way without taking on an advocacy role. So I think that's been that's been all good. Um, I think based on the, the scope of services, we've largely completed um, our scope um, based on what was intended for, for the phase one uh, scope of services. And going forward, where are we and you know where where are we heading? I think number number one, we need to reaffirm the kind of goals and objectives on behalf of the district. Um, we're gonna have a site with more density. Um, we're gonna have a site um, in which you can have annual recurring income or potentially prepaid uh, ground leases or even sale, sell a, a portion of the site. So I think the transaction structure could be a hybrid, which is a new one um, relative to when we presented this early on. Yeah. We might wanna consider that. I think we're gonna give some more study and time and evaluation with the district uh, management uh, to present to the board to help, help inform what's the right, right approach. Two, um, we're, we're going to kind of provide information and recommendations um, with regard to the Surplus Lands Act, um, that process, and if the project goes through that process and, and if someone is not awarded the, the deal, um, then we'll embark upon our, a public RFQ and RFP process um, to, to select the, the developer. But I think first and foremost, we've got to have the general plan update um, in focus um, to understand what that consists of, where we're heading, um, but also the market conditions have evolved. Um, and it hasn't necessarily been all positive for real estate. However, this is one of the most coveted sites. It, well, it is the most coveted site in Larksburg, but we're in the county, it's, it's probably on the top three list. So this site will have a lot of developer interest, um, but we're monitoring interest rates, uh, cost escalation, which impacts the residual land value. Um, so all that's gonna come into focus, I believe over the next 12 months. Um, so we can kind of refresh on a lot of the work we've done um, to further inform the district on, on how it might proceed going, going forward. So I can go into a lot more detail, um, but I just wanted to let the district know we have the team, we're engaged. Um, I think you know, hopefully we've delivered positive results uh, for the district so far. Um, we're engaged and committed to the project and, and look forward to, to continuing it. I'll pause there um, and ask the board for any questions, comments, suggestions. Do you have any idea when the uh, Larkspur uh, panel plan but will be finished? That's a good question. Um, I think that's a question probably better suited to the district's land use council. I would say it's going through its process um, such that I would hope in the next three to six months, you're kind of in a, a place where you're closer to having it find, have some final resolution. As of right now, um, the, the city of Larkshire is not, I don't believe, where they'd like to be um, regarding the general plan update, and it needs to be approved. But I would hope in the next three to six months, we'll have better clarity. Okay. Uh, any other board questions? I have a couple. Hi. Yeah. Good to see you. Good to see you. It's been a while. Yes. <laughs> over here, but I don't know. I forgot. <laughs> um, just one of you, one of the paragraphs in our discussion, it talks about screening potential developers. Are we that far along to do that? We haven't really made a decision one way or the other. I'm just yeah, it's for that great result. question. I would say no, we're not in a position to screen developers. I think. The first step is really going through the Surplus Lands Act. Um, that is step number one, such that we don't really step out of bounds and we adhere to that to that process. The, the way that works is uh, HCD um, out of Sacramento has a process and they register nonprofits. And so we would first make the site available to the registered nonprofits and based on the interest and also price in terms of what comes in through that process, we would then make a determination. Are we are we clearing um, price in terms that make sense? If yes, then we select someone. If not, then 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 we um, would move forward in the future with some form of a, a more formalized RFQ and RFP developer process. Okay, that's what I thought. Um, yeah, Larkspur need to move it they're way behind on their their general plan and 
I think they might be one of the cities that are getting sued. I think because theirs is not done. I don't know. Get into those politics. I think that's all. Oh, and there's some abbreviations here. I wasn't quite sure. What is a CBRE? PFM. Oh, it's from our staff. It, the P, PFM stands for uh, Public Financial Management. That's a firm. And CBRE stands for the CBRE, CB Richard Ellis. Yeah. is kind of what they're, they're known for. Um, okay. And over to the sub consultants is on the project. Okay. And you work with Riley for we do. here yes. and there still. Yes, Riley is the council to the district. Yeah. Um, but you so work with We work very closely. Okay, together. great. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions from the board? Yeah. When we're coming up, will, will this? Uh, it's, it's okay. okay. I'll go first. Well, I was just going to ask when we're coming up with an evaluation for the property, wouldn't I know it's cart before the horse? You have to offer it to the nonprofits first, according to the, the state list. But wouldn't the developers be a, be in a position to say to offer us an idea about what their idea of the value of the property is? Um, and so, in that, I you would think maybe they would be really happy to meet with us. Not the idea of getting something, just you know, what's an idea of what they their thoughts of developing something on it, so we would then have an idea. I know it's a cart before the horse, but how, how will we determine what's a good value that we should say, okay, nonprofits, here's right, here's the number? That's an excellent question. And one of the things we did use um, for CBRE, this appraisal that's already been performed um, and completed on behalf of the district, that appraisal um, has been completed. And so there, there is a value um, that's associated with it. I think that's that would be our litmus test and our lane worker. And I think that appraisal will need to be um, revised given the time that's elapsed um, since it was since it was performed. The other data point we would look to, the district has received unsolicited mm -hmm. uh, non-binding letters of intent um, <laughs> for very large numbers. And so- No one, right? Uh, there's one, um, there may be two, but for, for certain there's one. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a very large number, and that would also influence, you know, our our decision making as a non-binding letter of intent. We would have to square up with the, with the appraisal, of course. But that's that's really for the for the HCD process. If you're going to look to something to price in terms, one of the key items is going to be that appraisal. You're done, Michael. Yeah. Okay. My question is, uh, we're being asked to approve fifty thousand. Is do you expect that to get us down to an RFP to developers? Well, the answer is I'm not certain. Um, we build on a time and materials basis. Um, and so I I anticipate this will take us for the next six to nine months. My hope is our phase three is the launch of the RFQ and P process. Um, so so that that is the, the approach. Um, it's in terms of our services, if, if we're asked to do far more than we thought, ultimately we only bill on a time and materials basis. But where I sit today, I feel like that's a reasonable estimate, but not knowing what's going to be, be necessarily asked of us, um, it's just that, an estimate. Did, uh, did we get to use a lot of the work that's prior done, you did prior, you know, yes. previously? Okay, so a lot of that is still valid. I mean, now I understand the yes. appraisal. All of the work that we've completed to date will, one, reduce the amount of time that we spend on it. I think one of the things that will be important is understanding architectural feasibility studies, tying that to a pro forma analysis to derive what is the land value. Yeah. That's going to be a biggie. And that's where you get to spend a lot of time on tenure, you know, for sale product versus for rent. And what does the district really want to pursue um, going forward? And how does that impact your know, value? Well, I understand that a time delay always costs money for a consultant. 
because <clears throat> you have to continue the meetings and etc. Sure. So what's the uh, 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 motions motion. uh, I move we authorize the general manager upon reviewing the people of council to execute amendment number one of the contract for real estate services with Century Urban. I second. Not to exceed 50 grand. That's right. <clears throat> okay, any discussion by the board? Yeah. Any comments from the public? No. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? It's carried in no, no point in stopping in the middle of this thing. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, let's go back to you. Committee reports. Ad hoc facilities committee. Michael. Oh, we went. It's been a while since we've been to the facility. There was some slow downs over there because of all sorts of different stuff. But uh, Tom and I went over there yesterday morning and wow, what a difference. I'd say if it was up to me, we'd be meeting in there tonight, but probably be a little bit cold. Um, <laughs> you know, it's interesting. When you get in there at first, it's demolition and boy, walls are coming down and things are moving out and everything's happening very, very quickly. And then there's a lot of tedious work that happens, some plumbing, the wiring, uh, the, the cables for um, uh, the, uh, data and all that. And that takes a long time. And it's not something that you can really see. You have to really look into the rafters and see the hubs and the, the different pieces of that. Um, and that's what we saw the last time. But we went yesterday and Boy, the entire boardroom is framed down. The entire downstairs is framed now. And uh, all the concrete work down there with all the uh, the plumbing is, is, is completed and done. And it looks really fabulous. When you, when you go into that space, you have an idea. Wow, this is where we're going to be. And this is going to be our home uh, long after we're here. So um, that was exciting. And then when you go upstairs... <laughs> Um, and uh, fifth board member, Corpse Doug. <laughs> uh, and, uh, anyway, uh, but when you go upstairs, you can really see the offices have all taken shape. Uh, a lot of sheetrock has been done up there, um, and it just looks fabulous. You have the idea that this is really what it looks like. You go into the room that are going to be the locker rooms for the guys. Uh, I mean, even the little stuff that wasn't there the last time, like there's a um, a hole in the concrete that they had to cut down into the warehouse where there'll be a laundry chute um, uh, where the, the guys will take their uh, their dirty laundry and just instead of having to take it downstairs and uh, citrus, 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 citrus. Uh, when they bring the uniforms that are the clean ones, you can see the area where they'll all be hung up in alphabetical order. So you'll be able to see people will get their, their uniforms. Um, so it's it, it was a lot of changes since the last time. And you can see now, uh, probably weekly, you're going to see big changes. A lot of sheet rocking going to happen. Um, you're going to see that boardroom downstairs really taking shape. Um, you get an idea in the, in the back of the boardroom, there's that room that's going to be for the prep for board, you know, for, for this kind of stuff and uh, where tables are stored and chairs are stored and things like that. Um, and it's really taking shape. You can see where things, you, you can stand there now and you get an idea of the volume of the room that you didn't get to see before. You, you didn't really get an idea of how big is this room going to be and where the people are going to sit. And um, it, it, it's very exciting and I look forward to being in there. You know, my comment is, is that uh, I ask a question, what is there that I know this is for the flat maps? And then you know, it seems like everything's been taken care of, which is, you know, all kinds of ideas. And we'll find out we have a of things. <laughs> and, um, but I think too, it's going to take a while. You know, as I'm, I'm thinking, 
Uh, uh, spring for maybe five months, really. Yeah. 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 And then it slows down. You know, the finish. Uh, I can't wait to get in there. It's a great place. Well, I asked Alicia, and the inside of the building will be done sooner than the outside of the where we need to do it the fences and the and the uh, the pavement and the so um you know we may be able to stage going in there but moving operations over there with the trucks and everything else may happen at a little bit later date right exactly we also need to furnish it you know and so i think that's going to be Situation. Most a lot of things are built in. It's uh, very apparent that we really use the existing offices. We haven't we didn't change all these things done well, you know. So some are new, but most are existing. Anyway, quite a project. How about finance committee? Mm -hmm. you know sure. Finance committee met yesterday at the RDSD offices and reviewed everything on the agenda that we have tonight, including something that we've already passed um, in detail, including the financial. We found them all to be in order. That's right. Okay. And you get to go through the financials in detail, which is quite a helpful How about Central Marin? Okay. Uh, well, the first thing we did is we uh, had a resolution for appreciation of Kate Bruyette, who was our former Brule. Huh? Brule, Frank. Brule. Uh, <laughs> I, I didn't want to correct you that way. Sorry, Kate Brule. <laughs> um, and she's, she's great. She's very happy. I think she appreciated that very much. Um, we, we had a study. Now, there's no um, action item on recycled water salinity reduction. Um, in fact, the salinity doesn't have to be, we don't have to reduce salinity. It's almost healthier for a CMSA to put out salt water or saltier water than, than non, but it was just a study. You need to dispose of salt. Yeah. Yeah. Because you know, you're putting water, putting it in the bay, which is already salt. Sure. And that's why when we had this possibility of MMWD building a, um, a desal on Pelican, CMSA was going to take their brine and, and put it out with our, with our, our, our water out. Um, but the, the the chloride and salt has gone down since the early 80s. Um, that's because we've done a lot of pipes. Um, they are going to put together um, some studies and send them to the general managers so that we can look at what, what our salinity is. I think the only real interest in salinity is to find out where we have intrusion. And, and so that's also the, remember. We used to use the compound in odor oh, control right. yeah. that was a chloride. Yeah. Um, and so that in and of itself boosted our salinity way up. We don't use that anymore. We're using hydrogen peroxide and other types oh. of scrubbing materials. Um, so in a certain way, some of the salinity has come down just in the nature of doing odor control and the way we do it now mm -hmm. in a more efficient way. Yeah. Yeah. You know, each of the three agencies have salt water intrusion. We all have the places near the bay Yes. Um, and then uh, we reviewed the MMWD strategic water supply integration roadmap, looking at what MMWD is going to do. Um, and some of that was recycled, some of that was expanded um, um, supply, and some of it was buying more from Sonoma. Um, so that's actually interesting. I think it'd be worthwhile for the board's members to uh, to kind of review it on our, on our agenda. Um, uh, we signed a professional services agreement with Corolla Engineers to provide technical support for upcoming facility electrical projects. Um, so we're going to make some more electricity. It was only for 52 grand, but it may change because once you open up some uh, walls and boxes, you don't know what you're going to find. Well, the other interesting thing, just real quick about that, is that it's it's not been an as built from day one that the plant has been there. But a lot of what's been done hasn't been um, uh, drawn, drawn up in a in a in a integrated. In one, integrated one way. And so part of what they're going to do is they're going to do what the what everything looks like right now, and that'll be the first time that's done. So that 
if we want to do some of the big projects that we're talking about and we bring people in, we can hand them a set of plans and say, this is what exists right now in place today. And that doesn't exist now. That's it's all in bits and pieces. Huh? It's surprising they don't have as built. So you well, want yeah. <laughs> well, they do, but it's not in one place. You've got this piece over here as built and this piece over here as built and wires running between them. But it'd be really good to have it all in one place. It's, you know, a, a, an engineering company can come in and look at the whole thing. Um, that was about all we did. It was a very, very well run meeting. You know, because I ran it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we were out at seven o'clock. Also, and, and it's an interesting thing. We've had, we've had 52 of these kinds of, uh, he said we've had 52 of these kinds of things. Um, these kinds of contracts come through in the past uh, to go and do stuff like this. And Corolla has done the majority of them. So that's awesome. money wise, not, not, there were 73 Seven. actually, and they did something like 14, but financial wise, because they did the big ones. Yeah. But, you know, they, they know our system you know, better than any other company. So, are you talking of the Central Marine meetings? And my opinion is, that we're paying and playing a much bigger part mm -hmm. in all of them. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> we absolutely are. As we should. Mm -hmm. North Bay. Um, okay, North Bay, by the way, Jean Mariani, I don't know if I said that, Doug wanted me to say that, is the now the new chair. Oh, and um, it was a fabulous meeting, and it was a guest speaker, Sherry Lassick, senior grant funding specialist who did a presentation on an overview of the status of federal and state funding. And she talked about the general range of priorities for water service, services, agencies, districts, and municipalities, and answered questions. She talked also about the state general fund, the voter bond propositions, congressional appropriations, local measures found out from foundations and corporations. Who is she with? West Yos. West Yos. West Wow. <laughs> she is. Um, so the thing that I thought was really interesting is, is how much money is going into to, to the feds for water. And an infrastructure, infrastructure law is $55 billion to upgrade water infrastructure, $50 billion towards water system re resiliency. And there's other billions here and there, but those are where the, the big money is mostly going. And well, there's also, but not as much going to drinking water and other issues. And there's also some funding for wildlife, wildlife management, uh, weatherization, et cetera. And that's my report. And if I could just add one more thing that I've discovered since then in speaking with Jason. Um, is that like the Central Marine Sanitation Agency? One of the problems with applying for some of these grants and funding for our systems here is there's a new thing in all this stuff called Buy America. You have to have a certain amount of your project has to be made, produced, and purchased in the United States. And if you don't qualify for that, you don't get the money. And, you know, the Germans and the Austrians just built really good pumps and, and other things. And like our, our Genbacher engine here is an Austrian engine. And so we got our grant for that from a different place. And before all this stuff came into play, but we probably wouldn't be uh, able to get some of this grant funding. Um, for many of our projects here, because it's just not made in the United States. My guess is there's an exemption if you can't actually get something. Yes, but you really have to yeah. stand on your head and do oops for that. Yeah. Mr. Portman, you don't have to stick around for the entire meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no, not <laughs> got just very small children. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
That's the spag and go ahead. Have a lime drink. Have a snack. Yeah, have a strawberry. <laughs> okay, let's move on to nine verbal report. Yes. Um, oh, uh, Paul, did you have those handouts? Yep. Um, James. So uh, I'd like to start off my uh, GM verbal report with uh, when I'm Andrew Paul uh, passing out uh, email we received from the front desk earlier oh, yesterday actually. Mr. Raymond, he's a would you know him? He's a pediatric dentist. He's retired now. He takes great photographs. Yeah. Yeah. So this was, uh, yeah, I think Dr. it states it in the subject yeah, line. There's no doctor. Right. Yeah, the subject line. The subject line just says this at work, storm or no storm. Exclamation point. Thanks. <laughs> and uh, so, uh, yeah, a note of gratitude from a customer in Catfield as our office staff, Katie during the go This is in the inbox. And um, this is a picture of us working um, during an atmospheric rigor. Mm -hmm. Because uh, actually, I was looking at the uh, marked cover, you know, our remote monitoring, our rain gauges, and the peak flows through our system were at 9 30, 9 45 that morning. So, mm -hmm. this is a picture during uh, peak storm, peak flows mm -hmm. in our system. With our vacuum truck. And this is also, I mean, this is very close to my house, like around, <laughs> around the corner on Barron's. And it's even closer to um, Barbara. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I can't think of what your last name is right now. Ron and Barbara Henderson's house. <laughs> yes, so <laughs> this is going to go into the general manager's monthly bulletin. Yeah, it's an awfully nice picture. It's a great picture. Even a quote. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's a major switch to a screenshot. So I have some other handouts. Because we haven't been together for a while, so I thought we'll just make this kind of fun. Another thing that I wanted to feature was something that Superintendent Josh Hill put together. It's just a PowerPoint, and you know, I could bring would it up like on the screen. Would you like to see? Oh, sure, why not? That way, the folks at, at home can see. Wow. And what? so, this is remember, we talked about the easement initiative. We've heard this, right? That, you know, we started off by putting something on the website that really explained the rules oh, for yeah. folks because 35% of our, our uh, uh, System is on easement, and so what this? If we go to the first page, and I, you might—I don't know if you go to slideshow. Yeah, there you go. So this is uh, right off of our uh, sewer map in the Kent Woodlands area, uh, toward the top of of the watershed. Um, this particular sewer follows a canyon, you know, where there's a drainage. It's a tributary of Tamalpais Creek. So uh, this is phase two of our easement initiative. Phase one was really reaching out to customers. We got over 700 customers that provided contact information so that our staff can give them a heads up when we're out on the property doing uh, maintenance, you know, no surprises, good customer service, learning about, you know, folks' preferences for when we do have to do work on their land. And uh, now that was phase one, it's been a really good success. Uh, it was featured in something else I'll talk about later in my report. Uh, but this is phase two, which is, these events can be uh, dangerous for our staff in terms of accessing and cleaning sewers. Uh, if they're not cleared um, and or there's a uh, landslide that can occur and the trail we used to use to drag the hoses in for cleaning, you, you know, we can't traverse safely, perhaps. So we're looking at uh, safety of our workers, quality of life. You know, there's a lot of poison oak up in these hills, as an example. So phase two of our easement initiative is to clear these areas and recognizing there's a co-benefit of fire prevention as well you know if we clear out some underbrush and that enables us to get work done we're also having a co-benefit of fire prevention so we did put some money in this year's budget to clear easements make uh, necessary improvements as needed so this is a this is a particularly you know i asked staff to give me your top 10 or top 25 or what have you so we did generate top priority easements, and now, uh, Paul, I'm thinking we've done maybe five of them, or? We're on the fifth one right now. Yeah, yeah, so this might be the fourth one. This was a, a very ambitious easement um, through, uh, we call it Woodland Place, and, uh, and it goes really from the bottom of the canyon up to the side of the ridge. So here's some pictures that we can go through. 
Uh, and Josh did a nice job of, of indicating before and after. So you see, Wait, can I ask who did the work? Uh, our our staff uh, actually no the the actual clearing was was a contract. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'll figure out. I'll get the name for you. Yeah. yeah, and and you know I know in this business certain contractors won't deal with poison oak, but we found the ones that will. Yeah. 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 And so, so this, do you have to get the permission? Of the... Oh yes, and that's part of the the the, uh, the whole initiative is really to reach out to the to landowners. No surprises is really part of our easement initiative, and uh, to get their buy-in. Um, uh, for for access, you know, we we have the ability to do it legally. And yeah, you, you, you want to be nice, nice. but we want to be neighborly, and uh, you know, we have to be but come back and uh, and and do so in a way that we're communicating what we're doing. So here's you know one example. You see, you know that rat rod hole uh, in this, in the after picture, completely covered by vegetation. Right. Really hard to access that with equipment. Yeah, uh, picture. And even sometimes just the find. You know, yeah. Yeah. The file just to locate yeah, but yeah. right, and that's where uh, and Paul's pointed out. You know, we, we bought some of the labs or you know the uh, the markers, the, the markers. So now we can we're marking all the manholes as we go through. So if it's in the middle of the night or anything like that, we're not searching for manholes. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So just a, another example of the work that was done. Just the overthrow it, but now the path is, is the path we're set. You can travel up there. Yeah. More examples you see here. There's actually a road cut. A lot of these sewers were built, uh, and you know, and the pipes were laid, and, and they had to have access roads to the original installation of the sewers. And so there are logical pathways for our travel. They get completely obscured through uh, the paved roads, and so we re reestablished them. Yes. Any Does that have a new markers that you put in? A little blue post. That's probably an old existing one. We're using a, a fiberglass green with a sewer system sticker on it, a reflective one, so they can see it at night if they have to go in there. Yeah, with flashlights. Yeah. All right, here's the next one. Yeah. Yeah. Here's the, here we have a couple people for uh, uh, scale. But then here you see, you know, removing the logs, cutting them, doing the metal, right? Various stripping hazards, but in the wet. Okay, next slide. It's some more example of fallen trees over our access ways. More example of that fallen trees. And you know, there's an incident, like we talked about, there's this benefit of uh, reducing undergrowth for sort of fire protection. And I think that's that. So we just wanted to feature some of those pictures. Uh, we're, we're pleased to see phase two of our easement initiative, you know, being implemented on the ground. Great. And uh, yeah, we, we did communicate with the fire departments. We have three fire departments in our jurisdiction, and uh, they're all in the loop and supportive. We're, we're looking for ways where appropriate. In this case, not so much as you see, we're far away from the houses, but where we're within a certain distance of a house, uh, we can work with the landowner to get grants to do vegetation. Generally, within 100 feet, yeah. 100 to 100 feet, the fire department will work with you a little bit. Yeah. So we'll, we'll seize all kinds of opportunities uh, like that if they arise through this initiative. Well, well this is making history. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, up in the Fairfax Hills, that's probably another place that's pretty bad. Yeah, we, I mean, we've got some. It's not been probably a couple hundred years. <laughs> so. Actually, I think we're working on one in Fairfax, the Cascades. Uh, Cascades is the next one we're doing. That, that one is coming up, and that one, um, and uh, there's a, a line that's parallel San Selmo Creek, uh, starting up at the Meadow Way and then going all the way down. Was that Frank's house? Near, near, uh, <laughs> near former board member Eggers' house. Yeah. Oh, good. So uh, that, one, that one grows up with a lot of blackberry, which is really hard for staff. You know, the, the you get stuck eating the mic for us and they don't know what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, so you're yeah. Right, like, yeah. Only during certain times of the year. Yeah. Uh, anyway, thank you uh, for uh, letting me give that verbal report and some visual aids. Uh, and so let me transition now into I've got three quick items. Uh, first, uh, you know, how, how shall I say it? We applied to be the small collection system of the year with the CWEA, and we were told a couple of days ago that we received that award. Yeah, we're going to go. This is for uh, collection systems that serve 
I believe, 50,000 population or less. So that makes us a small collection system, according to the California Water Environment Association. And uh, as I noted, we had a, a, a good tour with, there were six judges that came uh, uh, from different uh, collection systems around the state. So we were uh, meeting with our peers and, and uh, we were able to give them a tour. Uh, about an hour spent at the current facility with a PowerPoint going over things like the easement initiative and other items that we've been working on that we believe set us apart from other collection systems. And then we went to the landing and we were in the middle of an atmospheric river and it was coming down at one inch per hour intensity. And we had all of our little tents set up out there and we had three workstations for each of our uh, field crews uh, for condition assessment line maintenance and repair and they spent they took their amount of time to demonstrate their tools and te technology the, the judges were uh and you know enraptured you know? <laughs> they were very engaged asking questions really asking about the different types of nozzles we use for different uh, cleaning needs uh, root cutting all these details and then uh, i have to highlight uh, the senior collection system matt worker senior collection system worker Matt Jazik took a laptop and started showing how work orders were done. And he had the six judges were all huddled around him. I was in the back of the room and he was explaining how we do work orders uh, in a very clear method, you know, in a clear manner. Uh, and they were all really paying close attention and asking detailed questions about that CMMS system that we used and how it kind of it helps our crews communicate and cross uh, and even with our engineering department and and he just did such a great job as our spokesperson on on the strengths of why this this system really works for our field staff and uh and so i you know i i was paying attention to that and i saw that whole interaction you know he actually made a laptop and a database look interesting <laughs> <laughs> the field workers <laughs> yeah so i was really impressed so I'm thrilled that we were able to win this award, and I yeah, it's the first time I think this district has won a CWA statewide award. So, <laughs> I'm looking and, over and that wall like and thinking this. we're gonna have a wall like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and uh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Marin County agencies, I want to go and check. But is that going to come out in a, a blurb in the IJ or? Um, we are talking about preparing a press release, yes, and um, they would, they've asked us to delay a public notice notification until after the official CWEA awards, which are in April uh -oh. in San Diego. And then I think uh, today we also heard that uh, the CWEA president is going to come and speak to our board uh, in May. So after the awards are officially... Hopefully it'll be in the new place. No. In the new place. We don't think so. No, mm -hmm. September, September. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, this is a good, this is a good uh, meeting ground for us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and uh, yeah. So in the May seventeenth board meeting, right. the CWA president will come and meet. Who is it? No. Jeff Tucker. Tucker. Yeah, Jeff Tucker used to work for Napa Sand. Now he works for the Lighthouse. Okay. Yeah. One of our peers. So uh, and yes, as Director Kelly noted, we were the runner-up for the statewide award for public engagement and outreach for our cable TV commercial campaign, which is going on right now. I think Excellent. Director Banks, you saw uh, some of the- Yeah, we're on TV. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, we get the choice. Uh, we gave them some guidance on what you know, to go on. You know, food, food network, right? For the fall commercials, right? <laughs> some <laughs> other things. But we have a lot of sports. You know, so now you got March Madness going on, you know, with the bas college basketball. Sports <laughs> yeah. And, and uh, that one, you know, so you'll probably see some uh, commercials uh, from, from Ross Valley. And at the end, we, we feature all the logos of the Marin County Sanitary Districts who contribute. Kind of uh, to which was, which was the plan right from the start, which was about fifteen thousand dollars for a three month campaign. Instead of us spending fifteen thousand, we spend well seventeen hundred or whatever it is. Uh, you know, it's divided by nine. So we've done the heavy lifting to get these uh, good uh, outreach messages together, 
and and then it, it shows a, a message of unity throughout the county. Yeah. So I could get yeah. agencies to go. And uh, a big point. Yeah. So I, I think that was probably favorable for us in terms of the judges. Did the judges look at our smart covers today? <laughs> It was part of the presentation. We did that for overflow response and pump station. That's correct. Thanks, Paul. That's, that's right. Um, that was part of our uh, PowerPoint. It, it was, you know, like a chair, if you're interested in, you know, it's a pretty uh, uh, dense PowerPoint. Yeah, that's a lot of things that, that we're working How on. How many smart covers do we have? Do you know? 60. 60. 60. You know, in Italy, they engrave them with family names. <laughs> parts of Italy. Did, did we learn a lot during these uh, huge storms about where our, our intrusions worst because of smart covers? Uh, yeah, you know, we have a different reason for each smart cover deployment. Uh, some are some are in front of pump stations, so they give us a second alarm you know, in case that we have electrical failure. And by the way, we talk about this in December. We saved a sanitary sewer overflow thanks to that smart cover mm -hmm. that was at the station 20. Um, that's one reason. Other reasons, we're just tracking. We know that they're potential overflow sites. And so we, we use them as an early warning system. Uh, and others are just long-term data gathering to look for trends. And some are more trunk line based. Some are higher up in the system. Uh, you know, that, that we could maybe detect what you're talking about in terms of uh, increased intrusion. So um, we used it to track that area. You did a, a you uh, adopted a change order in December, and uh, we've been working in that area in the Santa Cruz Avenue, Santa Barbara Avenue area near Memorial Park. And our smart cover there is showing that it's making a difference. Another place is South Ridgewood and Kent Woodlands. Again, uh, data showing that that capital work has made a, a measurable difference. Um, and so, yes, we, we use it and clearly, you know, Paul Burmer and myself uh, watch it during the peak of the atmospheric river on our laptops. <laughs> we know the area. We, there's, you know, there's 60, right? It's We've got them memorized. And, we know which ones to look at quickly to see if well, even that's fabulous. You can go on your computer and you can find an area and you can find a flow. It's 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 that's a, a fascinator. Remote remote monitoring that's real time. I remember eight years ago when Greg Norby brought before us the idea of smart covers, and I think we purchased eight of them to begin with. I thought it was 30. No, 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 to begin with. Okay. It was six or we eight. Would rotate them. Yeah, we would rotate them between places well, we still, because we didn't have many of them. No, it, it wasn't 30 to get them. It wasn't 30. Mm -hmm. Six or eight, <laughs> and it was just, let's see what these things can do for us. And here we are with 60. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. Um, and so, yes, uh, I'll, I'll be happy to share a PowerPoint with you at some point in the future. Um, two real quick items related to this. I uh, just wanted to report to the board that uh, we, through this uh, remarkable wet season that we've had, uh, I think we have 11 atmospheric rivers and counting, because there may be one next week. We've had two storm-related overflows, wow. both under 1,000 gallons, more like 500 gallons each. Uh, that's very small. That's right. That's amazing. Um, and so I, I think, you know, Preparation is a big part of it. And I think uh, we're really grateful to Paul Brummer motivating his staff to raise our outputs on line cleaning last summer mm -hmm. and into the fall and uh, really being targeted in that work. And you know, I think that that hard work pays off. Mm -hmm. And as, we, as I pointed out in our metric report, we've been using more water. Well, that's because we've been cleaning more sewer. Mm -hmm. right? and uh, really kind of fighting back all that root growth from the drought period. Uh, and as, I, as we've heard from our peer agency, uh, this last year has been really hard for collection systems throughout the state because of the drought. The, the, the root growth has really caught folks off guard. We're talking uh, Miguel Medina at City of Vacaville, who I think is you know, a really great leader in collection systems. Uh, he, was, he was saying, yeah, you know, we were really making progress year after year, getting less overflows, less overflows. And then last year, we had more overflows mm -hmm. because of the drought 
and the root growth that we couldn't keep up with. And so, you know, I think by us taking that strategy last year, uh, we we hedged our bets. You know, we you still have a lot of uh, things that you're not going to catch everything, but we're also learning from mistakes we made as far as being more careful about not leaving debris in the sewers after we clean. Uh, we really have taken a, a harder look at that in terms of our standard operating procedures and so that we aren't shooting ourselves in the foot, you know, doing the right thing and yet making our job more difficult later. Mm -hmm. So there's some subtleties to the work that we've been really taking a focus at. And, you know, I'm hoping that it really has paid off. I think, you know, the lower build metrics are an indicator that so thank you. And then uh, finally, I did want to touch on the 1111 Anderson site design work. Uh, we are uh, in really just the final stage of getting approval from the city of San Rafael. Uh, this is outside the building. Um, there were some questions about the trash enclosure um, that the Marin Sanitary Service answered those questions just in the last few days. And so we believe the city is on the verge of approving the plan. And then, it'd be, then it's about a 30 day period to uh, administrative zoning review. So it's not a full design review because it's not that big a change. So uh, we're hopeful that that clock or that timetable is moving along and that we should see some movement here in the next month. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it continues to move along, not as quickly as we hoped, but it's moving. And okay. I think that's it for my report. Thank you. Um, item ten is verbal report by board members and requests for future items. All right. Any? Okay. No. Let's move on to consent calendar. Matters listed under this item are considered routine and maybe they are by or no point. Anybody want to remove anything from the consent calendar? I'd like to, you know, that we move, we move item B. <laughs> Just because I haven't called that in. And I think uh, if any change goes on this, we get a, a much better chance to go over the detail. Mm -hmm. We're really getting to I'd like to call the board's attention to um, pages eight and nine. And, and there's so much information in here that I'm trying to get people to want to look at, you know. And so we're two thirds of the way into the review. And here's a comparison budget actually. And so we can go right down the road. The total operating expense about 70% of the 66 and two thirds. So we're, we're up in a few, but right on with most of them. Is that, some, sorry to interrupt, uh, yeah. President Gaffney. Uh, is that line 25 that you're looking yeah, at? Yeah, isn't a, you know, yeah, okay. Good. That's line 25. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, I mean, it's a good summary. You can, you know, you check uh, how we're doing versus our budget. And the same with capital, although that's, that's, Capital, you know, come is more sporadic. It depends on the building and the if there's rain, there's less activity, things like that. But anyway, those are important things to look at. And then I also think our fundamental analysis, um, cash investment and all that. These pages, these pages have a lot of for us to check. That's all I want to say about that. Okay. Um, so we have everybody on the consent calendar. Michael Murray. Sorry. Okay, no seconds. Any further questions? Any comment from the public? Hearing none, uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Let's go to number, we've done 12. Let's go to 13. Mm -hmm. Consideration of approving contract claim here in the middle of the not to exceed $106,178 for additional work on the pump station, uh, 144 the pump stations, improvement project, and specific infrastructure. Who's going to take this place to so, uh, I'll kick things off, and I have uh, the old Ben Jenny, um, from the home office, I think. 
<laughs> but I'll, I'll uh, introduce it, Phil. Does that sound good? And then you can then I'll hand it off to you. Yeah, sounds good. Okay, good. I'm glad you can hear me. Um, so just to provide a little context, uh, this project has been going on for some time. We originally, uh, the board originally awarded the contract at the July 21st, 2021 meeting, which was coming up on, you know, quote unquote, for two years. And uh, while there are three pump stations, in the, and actually, this is a side note, all of our pump stations in the, in the system are in Larksburg, except pump station 15 is in Canfield. Right? So any pump station is in Larksburg, but these three are in Larksburg. There is, there is, it's the major Larksburg pump station 14. And then there are two important pump stations, 24 and 25, that are on Mount Elysio, which pump local sewers into the main port center that walks out. So you need that those pump stations with reliable backup power because they have to push into that uh, high pressure for port the rain. It goes all the way to the NSA, right there are there lots of stuff in there. So they're, they're specialty that require backup power uh, to, to avoid big problems. So we uh, focused, most of this project was about backup power, replacing the generator from station 14, replacing the generators at 24 and 25, which by the way, are still on back order. Uh, for 24 and 25. We have installed the generator at, at 14. Uh, and, um, and part of the, the list of uh, extra work <laughs> is in this board item was related to that generator work at 14. Um, so this this item, it feels a little bit like uh, you know, an end of project. And, and we are getting close. You know, when those two generators come for the 24 and 25, which I believe is April, Bill, correct me if I'm wrong. I think it's mid-April that we'll get them. We'll be really on the close to the, the to the point where we can close out the contract and declare victory uh, on this uh, last pump station project from the cease and desist order. Let's you know, third. And I wish it, I could have declared victory a year ago, but more supply chain related issues. So we haven't. There have been periods of, of downtime. Um, but steady work getting done in this site. You know, there's been a lot of uh, features on the Pump Station 14 project we're very proud of, such as the photo ionization odor control system. Here we are right next to, you know, I know the science teacher at the Call Middle School. He used to go to my kids' school, you know, Carter, Carter DeVault. I see him. I was like, Carter, how's it going? How's, how's, this, how's, this, how's the odors? You know, because it's a classroom right there. He said, I don't smell a thing, Steve. Because we got this this photo ionization, yeah. and you were there at the at the pump station twelve ribbon cutting, you know, and you couldn't even tell it was a pump station. Right? And it wasn't always like that. <laughs> you used to really know you were a pump station. So um, that's one among many things that we're, we're proud of with these upgrades. So uh, the list in here, uh, you know, I, I'll, I'll turn it over to Phil. But there are little uh, bits and pieces that we've added along the way. I'm a lot of electrical related. And uh, with that, I know Phil was preparing some things to tell the board about as far as the, uh, the proposed change or um, set we're asking for this one. Thanks, Steve. So, yeah, as, as, um, as Steve was mentioning, the change order is, uh, is a catch all of, of a, a good amount of extra little odds and ends at the pump station, mostly at pump station 14. Uh, the staff report, I grouped them into a little bit more cohesive units of, of structural, structural steel work, electrical. There was some fuel system and um, fuel system changes to the generator. And then even as, as Steve mentioned, uh, credits as well that came that came to the district. Uh, the bigger bigger items were electrical. Those uh, the, the biggest uh, item within that group was actually owner driven change uh, value added work to add an automate an automatic transfer switch uh, to that pump station so that the generator. Uh, we were having some issues with water intrusion that compromised the old ATS as we call it and 
we added that work to replace that that unit. Uh, there was other odds and ends, improving lights, uh, the routing of conduit to make a little bit more sense for for uh, moisture control as well as uh, just odds and you know uh, pieces that come up that need to get removed temporarily to in order to do structural work that you know you just can't catch every stick of conduit on a on a plan so natural little things like that uh one of the things that i'd like to highlight too about this is is this is you know a sort of a final balancing change order though as steve mentioned we're still a little ways out from final completion of the project but to date, this is the first change order. This is every change order on the project. It comes in around 6% of the total contract value. And that is, that's that's fantastic from, from an owner perspective that the change orders were, were kept to a minimum. Um, and yeah, we proceeded with the plan. We had a good plan going into it, it is what I would say. So, um, yeah, with that, uh, open it up to, to questions. So these have already been done, right? And you, uh, you explained to us yesterday, every single price is negotiated? Correct. Yeah, you, okay, and you, you get a bid estimate and then our um, CM guy reviews, you know, construction management, so Correct. Okay. Right. So, but, yeah, but we haven't paid anything, right? Yeah, no, we haven't paid them yet. Yeah. We've not paid yet. No. Yeah. This is this is uh, they haven't been able to bill toward this because we um, we haven't approved this this change order. We, how we how we've grouped them. We didn't have a, a bid allowance baked into this contract. Um, which is commonly what we'll put into our pipeline projects. So this is each each item is is uh, up per the review of the board. Okay, that's right. Any board? I'm quick on that too. This is fabulous organizational skills. <laughs> I mean, it's so clear. This the descriptions, and then you put at the end you numbered. <laughs> you numbered the summary, so and then you can match it. I really appreciate that. Thank you. And the red too. <laughs> Good organization. Yes. Good. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and Bill's been on this all along the way, and also yeah. Justin Super does a really nice job on the uh, just on the uh, change order documentation. And basically, every one is for pump station fourteen, except for the, some fencing. That's the other two. So it's, it's our, one of our key functions. That's so correct. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to I'll, make a motion. Action. I'll make a motion. We approve contract change order number one in the amount not to exceed $106,178 for additional work in the PS14, PS24, and PS25 Larksburg Pump Stations Improvements Project. Number 906 with Pacific Infrastructure Corporation. Second. Any further discussion? Any comment from the public? You're, okay, uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? I said I'm going to Thank you. Isn't it great not having the old call? Well, we don't get to your comments. I miss that. Yeah. You can summarize. <laughs> It was unanimous. <laughs> okay, and now we're going to move on to 14. 14. Consideration of approval of contract change under the form of the amount not to exceed $104,610 for additional work on the FY22.3 gravity sewer improvement project with Rossage Engineering. Speak. Yes, and uh, I'll do a very brief introduction. Uh, you'll recall in December, the board approved the change order number one for Glossage uh, to take work that we had planned in next year's gravity sewer improvement project and move it up one year into the Memorial Park neighborhood, Santa Cruz, Santa Barbara, and Salinas Avenue area. 
and we're, we're uh, wrapping that work up and we're seeing good impact on getting storm drainage out of the system as well as dealing with some significant pipe defects uh, in our material main system and, and uh, upgrading the lower laterals. So it's going well, wrapping up. We've identified an area just upstream because we were still seeing the stormwater coming in. This is a good time you know, to construct for these reasons because we do see where the stormwater is coming in. And uh, I've identified a line just upstream on Pasadena Avenue. Uh, it's pretty exceptional in terms of how many uh, what we call dead taps or uh, you know, basically abandoned laterals or storm drain or something, you know, that are not actual laterals that are connected to actual houses uh, along this line. So we're support, we're proposing to have it added to the contract um, at, at the same bid prices of the contract. So, uh, Bill, do you want to add anything else? Sure. Yeah. The um, as Steve said, just just to expand on that a little bit, we've we've been uh, working on the added work on Santa Cruz and Santa Barbara, and noted dramatic improvements in I and I uh, inflow and infiltration stormwater coming into our pipe in that neighborhood. The uh, as as soon as they were sealing up manholes, you were seeing that that water level just drop within the pipe going from a half a half pipe full of flow down to you know a quarter so so like a halving of the amount of flow by sealing up one manhole and 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 sealing out just you know a, a couple sections of pipe um and that progressed as we moved along we've noted a significant amount of clear water flowing down Pasadena and coupled with feedback from our maintenance department about problems with rock and debris getting into the line that that tracks with the the uh, as Steve said the dead taps are broken uh, these are these are laterals that have been abandoned when we camera and look up them you can see uh, broken pieces of pipe that that would allow rock and debris into our main and cause maintenance problems. So it's 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 uh, timely also uh, to replace this as uh, the town of San Anselmo is gonna be slurrying that street Pasadena uh, this summer. It's on their slurry list. So taking care of that. And um, also it's uh, it was identified in the uh, uh, capacity and flow monitoring study that we did that there was a capacity issue in Memorial Park downstream of this that uh, showed some some pretty large pipe was actually coming back as uh, uh, showing a capacity issue. So uh, we're not going to tear up Memorial Park. I think that the town of San Anselmo um, really, really have a, uh, a knip about that, but um, <laughs> So we've we've uh, the other way to address that capacity issue is to hunt down these I and I problems upstream. So this was a dead ringer for that type of work, and Pasadena would fit right in line with that as well. It all sits in a low uh, at the bottom of a drainage basin and an old what what you know what looks like would be a creek bed as you dig into it. So it's um, it's a, a fantastic candidate for I and I reduction as well as the maintenance uh, considerations. I have a question. Is it old creek that's been filled in? Oh Lordy, I hope. <laughs> yeah, a lot of uh, a lot of our sewers. Uh, and, and you can imagine if you were here in 1899 or 1910, um, and you were putting a new sewer system in, you put it at the low point in the canyon, you know, to get it out to, uh, according to their creeks, where everybody wanted to put it. You know, <laughs> I'm, so, I'm not going to ask any more questions. So, yeah. But, you know, that was so spent. You know, we were different, different times. We were less densely populated you know, back then. <laughs> I note this is a 99 year old pipe. Yeah, that's a little question. Any further? Oh, 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 oh
Are you replacing the main or are you just sealing up the dead lateral? Um, actually, replacing the main, right, Bill? I mean, that's, you know, we're pipe bursting, you know, so we're putting in, we're taking the old terracotta or clay line and, and bursting it and pulling in a new HDPE plastic line, a little larger diameter. Um, and then we connect the laterals. We get rid of the abandoned laterals so there's no more connection of rock and, and groundwater. And then uh, we put in new connections for each of the laterals that are uh, more or less watertight. Yep, and seal up, seal up that connection to the manhole and then also seal, <laughs> seal the internals of the manhole as well, usually. And, and, and in some cases, many cases, we'll do a, um, additional rehab work on the manholes or even replace them all together. What's the size of the pipe in Memorial? Uh, in Memorial, I think it's there's a 12, and then it goes into, is it a 15 or an 18? I forget. But yeah. uh, I believe it was the 12-inch sections that were shown to be under under capacity we didn't do a give me a shot to do that when they were working place apart no, it's so, a new, fairly new pipe the 12 but, inch and once we get the, the, one, the one thing i want to comment in that study the all the, the next three or four or five segments all downstream were all 12 inch so even if we would have enlarged it at memorial park we still would have been bottlenecked down the street and I know we looked at that when we talked about that capacity study. Okay. Most people don't realize it, but when you go from a six to an eight, it's not two inches bigger. It's double the volume. Yeah. I mean, it's double the volume. Yeah, it's exponential. Six squared and eight it's squared. It's a square. Yeah. yeah. And it's, I also, it's, it's also it's ties of volume. Yesterday it was high. Yeah. <laughs> and if we, get, if we get this all cleaned up, the 12 inch will be enough, right? You're, yeah, you're saying that you were surprised that the capacity of the 12 inch wasn't wasn't enough, and that's because of the INI. Did I understand that correctly? What's the plan? Yes, yeah, we would by reducing the INI, we would so so those that that capacity issue identified at Memorial Park was based upon uh storm events. So model model storm events like a 10-year. Uh, a 10 year storm, for example, and what the expected uh, rainfall contribution to our flow would be. And that identified those those uh, hot spots, I guess we'll call them where where we uh, we have areas where there's a lot of I and I based on flow monitoring. And yeah. we could we could um, revisit, you know, uh, add some more flow monitoring data after we've we've done improvement work, work like this and then be able to identify, you know, or or um, show that or be able to add that information to our model. And it's likely that the model would show um, a, uh, a additional capacity now in that system as we remove the INI. Yeah, we're, we're fortunate that, you know, our flow monitoring modeling study is based on some uh, specific points in storm monitoring that we can compare over time. So we talked about that last month in terms of our study design. So in the future, there will be another flow monitoring study. It will be at the same location. And like Phil says, you know, that monitoring information will then uh, be used in the model update. And hopefully we'll, we'll show that we have more capacity. And any comments? Let's do it. Well, questions? I, let's, I, I move. <laughs> so I, I, the more we get rely on the better we're off. So uh, I would uh, move to approve contract change order number four in the amount not to exceed $104,000, $610 for additional work on the fiscal year 22-23 gravity sewer improvement project number 953 with Glossage Engineering Incorporated. Second. Okay, any further discussion? Any comments from the public? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Good answer. It's a thank you, too. Thank you. Thank you. I am 15 A is this fabulous. It's going to metric on the report. 
metrics, the climate metric, nothing to tell you. Yeah, I'm, I'm probably, I'll, I'll give it a highlight. It's interesting, uh, and then I'll let Paul give you a couple highlights. Uh, I thought it was pretty interesting just looking at the flow. I think we all look at the flow graph, you know, yeah. on, on page six of the report and just how January was so uh, significant in flow and in February it came down. I think you'll see March will be another big stop with these last couple of atmospheric rooms. But, um, and also, uh, you know, we, we did report on the judges' trip. We talked about that earlier today, you know, as far as the, the statewide award and how, um, how well that tour went. I, 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 also, I just love it too when everybody's on time. I mean, it's so hard you know, to do those presentations. I was sure I was on time. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> but it's our, our whole tour. We, you know, we had to go, we had to travel to two different locations, and nobody went over there a lot of time, you know, yours truly included. Can you imagine? <laughs> 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 so, anyway, uh, and, and then I, yeah, I'm probably gonna steal your thunder here, but right, I, right. Think, I think this lift station, you know, page three, I just gotta say, uh, really. Uh, Credits to Paul Brummer. Uh, and, and this is what I could call adaptive management. You know, you, you adapt to a situation that you encounter and you solve it uh, mm -hmm. midstream. And, and so with pump station 33, it's a really important pump station. It, it, it takes the, the total of five other pump stations in the Riviera Circle, large marine, marina area, low lying sewers, and it pumps it under the Corte Madera Creek mm -hmm. idle system. Over to the Bonaire area and then discharges in the manhole there by the Bonaire Center. And uh, so it's very sensitive and it's very close to the bay. And in the first storms of this year, we were having to put overtime and on call staff on this pump station because so it's not keeping up with what the other pump stations were sending to it. And, and we even had to ask uh, SD2 for help because our backhon was on was having trouble and we had to ask SD2 to borrow their backhon to help keep this pump station 33 from overflowing. And um, Paul asked the question, you know, it's like, well, gee, you know, these are the same size pumps here uh, as the upstream pump stations. So there's five horsepower pumps, two of them. What if we increase to seven and a half? You know, and then we looked at it and, and we thought, you know, just let's do it because think of what we're going to say in terms of overtime and just hand wringing that we're, you know, and have an SSO in the middle of the night. And, uh, and he did a test, he put them in, you know, it's we did all in, in house pump crew. Uh, we put in the new pumps, and, and you can explain Paul what it is. You just put a pump in, you got to make sure that the discharge line works yeah. and they can fit in the, in the area. And then he did a test run. He sent me a text of a video of them turning on the pumps and showing it coming into the mail downstream and just how not dramatic it was. <laughs> you know, in other words, we weren't overwhelming the system by increasing the pumping because we were worried, you know, as I, so we measured the PSI. Um, and you can tell me the numbers. We went from a four PSI with the five horsepower to a 10 PSI with yeah. the seven and a half. All right. You know, 10 PSI is no problem at all. So we're not threatening that creek crossing, right? Because we don't want to threaten that. Uh, and, and so this is all during the wet season, you know, that we're, we're modifying the pump station. And, uh, you know, so you can look at our smart cover data, you know, it's, it's really easy to look at the software. You can see where the levels were in December. And now you can see where they were here in March. And they're just, you know, running like, it was like purring like a kitten, just running perfectly, no drama. No overtime anymore. Problem addressed. Um, well, that's right. You know, and so I couldn't be happier because we're dealing with you know. We should be going the picture of Paul and the rain out there. Yeah, with the <laughs> with the borrowed back on. You know? <laughs> the uh, image. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just drop it on. I don't think you can blur out Chris Osaki. He's a big guy. <laughs> well, yeah, at least Bell was helping that. Right? Bell too, but. Yeah. As he too did help as well. Yeah, yeah, we really appreciated their help. You know, we love being able to help out others, but we need help. And SD2 came, you know, yeah. SRSD came to help us you know, when we needed it. But then we figured out the problem thanks to Paul. And, uh, and you know, I approved those, I approved those uh, 
expenditures well within our pump station um we have those budget mm -hmm. uh, you know to do those pumps because they're not they're not the big pumps you'll you'll hear about those during budget time but <laughs> when you talk about ps 15 but uh, <laughs> but ls 33 <laughs> this is um, something that we could absorb no problem and uh, it's a great story uh and just great adaptive management uh, taking a good critical eye, critical thinking, see what's going on and, and solving the problem during the wet season. <laughs> so I just want to thank you. And then, Paul, any other um, uh, highlights you want yeah. to put And so, like Steve said, you know, this our most recent big storm, we had over four inches of rain in overnight, basically. Yeah. Um, you know, I was on my phone, like Steve said, smart covers. Using the ignition, I was checking 33. I can see the levels from my house. I can see what pumps are running, how many gallons per minute we're running. And uh, before the upgrades, um, we were above high level, close to 12, 13 feet, which our normal operating is five feet. So you can imagine how high that water is getting in those lines and those manholes. We never once hit the high level alarm at nine feet. So success. Um, and you know, pump station crew did a good job out there working and uh, all that. Where we have a uh, line maintenance crew again talking about one of our easements, the challenging easements over off of Cedar Avenue. Um, staff really worked hard to, you know, like we said, we were having to pull hose through these easements and whatnot, um, clearing roots. Uh, due to the drought, you know, now we're catching up a little bit. Hopefully, they'll stay out for a little bit now. But they're they're appeased at the moment. Uh, <laughs> but staff is also looking at consideration. We have found a a, a Rudex, which is a, a an application we can do without a pesticide license uh, to to hit some of the heavy root areas, just spot treat certain lines, so we're not root foaming a whole system or any of that, but we can spot treat certain lines. So staff are going to look into using that in some of our heavy root easements, so which will help hopefully prevent some more SSOs. Uh, we also, uh, line maintenance also spent a good amount of time using their handheld CCTV equipment, um, evaluating rehabilitated lines and the Ken Woodlands, like Steve said, stated earlier, you know, we're doing a lot of lines at a rapid pace. So um, to prevent us from just going out and flushing them as usual on every six months because they were a problem line, if once we evaluate them with our CCTV, we can put that to a two-year cleaning, a three-year cleaning, and then we can deliver staff to where they need to be. It really it's, makes the most of our efficiency. It really helps us out. And it keeps our manpower where we need to be. So I really uh, wanted to point that out to you guys that we're really trying to reassess our flushing schedules as we're doing this capital improvement work because it does save us time. Um, the repair crew, uh, found a homeowner that uh, <laughs> drilled a two-inch line through one of our uh, sewer pipes out there. <laughs> where, was, where are we at here? <laughs> Sorry, I lost yeah, it here. We're on San and Selmo and Redwood Road. Yeah, yeah. Two-inch galvanized pipe right through the top of our <laughs> pipe. Um, so we talked with the homeowner, told them about the USA A11 safe dig, and that put a patch in. Did and the uh, homeowner know he'd done that? No, we, we found it through CCTV. We're driving up the pipe, and there's a post driven right through our pipe. Oh, I see. So we located it. It was for a sign, or a, it was for a, they were using it to hold up a little retaining wall. You just started driving pipes into the ground. It was so. an easy spot to go through. Yeah, it probably went pretty easy once we hit the pipe. <laughs> Uh, and then condition assessment staff has really been working hard on doing manhole assessments, especially for the I and I piece of it all. Um, and in February, they did 122 manholes using the IBOC panorama camera, which is a 3D scanner camera. They lower it in and it does a 3D image of the whole manhole. And then they can assess the actual overall uh, condition of that manhole and what repairs may be, need to be made. Um, as well as other stuff, but the CCTV is really focused on that last month, which was really good. Um, and it, it works to complete the IA and PU's recommended work. Um, that's all I have. If there's no question, or if you guys have any questions, please let me know. Well, I noticed that we are uh, doing preventative maintenance on our ARVs. Yeah. And 
we that was an area where we were missing previous things. Yeah, in the place them, we had a big project. So yeah, especially after these big storms, because it whips a lot of grease through the system. You know, the pumps are pumping a lot, a lot of mixed air in. So we need, really need to check them after these big systems and make sure they're not plugged up, building up pressure. Mm -hmm. That's cool. On the uh, Sansomo pipe, how'd you resolve that? Uh, the which pipe? The one where he drove it through. Mm -hmm. So when we talked to the homeowner, we just pulled the pipe back out and then we used an internal pipe patch so we didn't have to dig up his whole backyard. It was in another easement. You know, people, I don't think people think about it when they're in their backyard, but now we know. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we did an internal pipe patch on it and um, yeah, we did. But he doesn't have to pay for anything. We, yeah, we could argue the fact, but it was pretty minimal it wasn't major damage it was the top of the pipe and it was able to be sealed so we just try to inform as much as we can at that fact if somebody i guarantee if we go back next month and there's another pipe four inches over, <laughs> we might have another problem at that point i mean i'm glad you get that yeah with a cable company that Drill the hole through. That'll be on next month's report. <laughs> yes, we are dealing with an issue right now with uh, it was part of the hospital uh, rehabilitation when they built it, and at some point Comcast didn't actually get their line put in. They were with the construction, so now they're looking to vertically or to bore it. We've had multiple field meets we spent multiple hours we shut down the station shoved rods through the force main marked it as far as we can we couldn't get all the way through so we felt field met with the contractor multiple times saying we need you guys to pothole 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 well differing differing stories but um it seems like the contractor possibly moved their drill area to get away from potholing and they were 42 inches or four feet away from our main and banged into it. Luckily it's at 25 and it's our secondary main okay. and not our live main. So uh, they thankfully would, they would have known about it right away. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so but yes, it's under control and we're working to get a repair done and uh working behind the scenes to remedy that situation. Yeah. Are we charging them? We yes. them we're them. charging them on that one. Good idea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Comcast has got enough money. They yep. get... <laughs> yeah, paying us enough rent anyway. Yeah. <laughs> and if you look at the flow, it's put, you know, the crystal wall is on the tight more for you. But then during the wet weather, you know, it looks like okay, we go to 49 percent, but it's 49 percent of a huge amount more water. Mm -hmm. So there's a gigantic impact yeah. on the median versus the median, you know, or average. It's way up. That's why we kind of work. Yeah. Any other comments from anybody? No. Nice yeah. to be back. Great work, small collection. Yeah, of the year. It was ball and And you win it two years in a row. Oh, are you challenging us? What? Are you challenging us? I would have. Every year. That's what I'm. Uh, is there a collection? Is there a small collection? Of the nation. Of the nation. Of the nation world. Yeah. We're probably not. CWEA yeah. this one. Yeah. Uh, anyway, just great. Yeah, it's great. I can yeah. yeah, you're all smiling. Yes. First staff member I talked to afterwards was Julian. Um, <laughs> okay. Yeah, but yeah. 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 he was in person as I thought. And I said, Congratulations to her. Yeah. Yeah. And her guy will get Yes. So is during yes. the meeting, there's no vote required. Is there? No. Meeting is during. Okay. 